In the headlines, Belvi Chopin Primary optimistic about national assessment after a difficult two and a half months. New OECS Chairman Honorable Roosevelt Scarrett wants to see a unified approach towards the reopening of borders in the OECS. And the OECS says it has a plan to address a challenge to its social safety net. I'm Andrea Louis with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up, switch to Flow. It only gets better. Thank you for staying with us. First up, major concerns at the Bellevue Chopin Primary School ahead of this year's Grade 6 National Assessment. Julian Morris has that story. The exam scheduled for the 7th July is only two and a half weeks away. Prior to the announcement by the Ministry of Education last week, children were being homeschooled using various online platforms. Grade 6 pupils started returning to the classroom to better prepare for the July 7 exam by having face-to-face -to -face classes with their teachers while adhering to the guidelines of the Ministry of Health. Principal of the Belleville Chopin Primary School says though she is hopeful for good results at the exams, things have been difficult these past two and a half months. I must admit it has been a difficult task. We have the Google Classroom. It is indeed a, a, a great platform, but we have a problem, a big problem at Belleville. Very few students have devices and very few of them have access to internet. So what we did, of course we are operating with the Google Classroom, but especially with grade 6, out of the 5, only 2 of them have, have access. And even with these 2, sometimes you get a little problem in having them go to the classroom. The printing and distribution of learning packages was key over the past several weeks. The principal says she is pleased that uh, in-person classes have resumed so that students can focus on the subject areas which need most work. They were already a little slow in the comp composition area, so we are kind of fearful, but we try not to put the fear on them. But it's, it's not an easy process. Generally with the school, less than 25% have their own devices, and some of them have to wait until their parents come home, and some parents don't care about that, you know. One of the main problems we had, we had no internet. We only got internet like three weeks ago. Yeah, we had no internet, and even the school has no devices. So we were given a donation of, um, from some agency, I think many schools in the island got that, where they gave us 16 computers, but unfortunately only five of them are working. This year, grade 6 pupils from the Petit Savan Primary School will sit their exams at the Belvi Chopin Primary School in order to eliminate travelling to their school compound in Bath Estate. This is different for us this year. We are trying to welcome them because they are from the same community. In fact, we, that was the first I, they, I allowed the principal chose her classroom. And uh, my cleaner came in this morning because they are starting with a little class face to face. So um, my cleaner came in this morning and did a general cleaning. You know, I, I think we have enough space for them. It's all people, all of us together, the mother, my, the Mary. Five students from Belvi Chopin and six from Petit Savan will be sitting this year's grade six national assessment. In other top stories, Grand Bay residents cautioned against indiscriminate dumping of garbage during the hurricane season. We again join Julian Morris with more. This from a fellow resident of the community who admonished others for dumping waste in an area between the Boxing Shed and Maranatha Square. Tony, a bus driver who plies the Grand Bay route, says truck drivers paid to dispose of waste at the Foncole landfill regrettably choose to dump material in this area instead. And you got the same truck drivers taking material from people home and charging the people from their home to the landfill and disposing it right there. The reason why I saw that is because me and my little boy come to bathe by the river and I saw when they don't back up out there. What we Grand Bay people doing there is not possible for people, neither Rosso people are doing that. When you dispose the garbage there, you are doing 
scary wickedness, you are doing Lennox wickedness, you are doing the country and yourself and your family wickedness. I would urge, urge Granberry and to stop that kind of dispose of garbage anywhere. And it's not here alone. They do need that more poor too. Due to the proximity of this area to the river, the material being dumped causes even more concern as the country is in the hurricane season. We're talking about prepare for hurricane season. That is what that causing the river to do all that damage. Because anytime the river pick up them them garbage there, yeah, it have to stop the water for a while. When the water stop, the water build up, and when that water start going again, it's like a gunshot. So I was urging all Granberryans, Granberryans, please, I'm begging, stop doing our own self wickedness. Stop disposing garbage in the wrong area. You have solid waste, truck is passing regular. Granberry people cannot lie, they're passing twice a week and they are doing a good job. General Manager of the Dominica Solid Waste Management Corporation, Florian Mitchell, has continuously called for Dominicans to stop illegal dumping around the country and instead take the trip to the landfill in Focolay to dispose of garbage. Tony, a former employee of the Solid Waste Corporation, says he contacted the manager of the corporation who agreed to visit the site on Monday to help determine a course of action. Well, I spoke with the bossman and the bossman willing to come up and see. And I guarantee with that bossman of Solid Waste, yeah, he will do something about it. He will clear it, but I think we need to block this spot. And grandbaby, we need to stop that because you cannot do that every time and this depending on... When we finish, we blame in government. We need to blame ourselves. In other developments, the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, comes under high commendation for reaching its 39th anniversary of existence. The congratulatory remarks from the International Organization on Migration, IOM. The OECS is an intergovernmental organization dedicated to economic harmonization and integration and the protection of human and legal rights. The organization was formed on 18 June 1981 with the signing of the Treaty of Bastère. Dominica forms part of the OECS along with six other full members and four associate member states. Regional coordinator in the office for the Caribbean and chief mission for Guyana, Robert Natiello, says the IOM has a long-standing relationship with the OECS. IOM has worked uh, in most of the uh the OECS member states uh, implementing projects uh, on a, a number of different migration issues from diaspora engagement uh, to trafficking in persons uh, to disaster response, uh, specifically after the Hurricane uh, Maria in Dominica and also after Hurricane Irma uh, in Antigua and Barbuda. Uh, IOM is committed to continuing its collaboration with the OECS as part of its commitment to continued partnership with the OECS, the IOM will spearhead a climate change project expected to get underway soon, supported by the government of Germany. In order to address the issue of climate change, we are about to undertake uh, a project um, with the generous support of the government of Germany through its uh, GIZ cooperation. Uh, this project is an opportunity for us to address the challenge of, of climate change and human mobility. Uh, and we will do this uh, with the six independent member states of the OECS um, through the gathering of evidence uh, and regional cooperation and dialogue. So IOM uh, looks forward to continuing to collaborate and to strengthen its relationship with the OECS. And again, we extend our heartfelt congratulations to the OECS uh, on this anniversary of its establishment. Prime Minister Scariot assumed the chairmanship of the OECS Authority on Thursday. The 69th meeting of the OECS Authority was the first ever held by video conference. Mr. Scariot took over from Antigua's Prime Minister Gaston Brown. There are no best practice manuals we can reference on how to balance lives and livelihoods in these circumstances. And yet, our call is to proverbially accurately punctuate each sentence, even as the chapter unfolds in real time. As we all seek to reopen our borders, there is the urgent need for close coordination among our countries, working in collaboration with our international partners. We need to think through clearly on the required protocol, and as far as possible, get uniformity in the region. To do otherwise, I believe will be to our disadvantage. Any lack of clarity will insert uncertainty 
in the marketplace. In the absence of a vaccine, for example, for COVID-19, the need for testing is indeed the crucial element. We have seen that airlines, understandably perhaps, have shown no appetite to take on that burden at the source for visitors seeking to come to our shores. As it stands now, going into this period, we will have variants on exactly what steps should be taken once both our nationals and visitors arrive. Maybe it is an area that calls for more thought and more dialogue. While understanding there is certain urgency to all of this. Whatever we do, we must be mindful not to undermine the good work this region has done over the last three months in containing the virus. All heads of government attended except for St. Kitts and Nevis and Guadeloupe. Prime Minister Skerritt will remain as chair of the OECS Authority until June 2021. The last face-to-face -face meeting of the OECS Authority took place in February 2020 in St. Kitts and Nevis. The chairmanship of the OECS Authority rotates annually in alphabetical order. You are watching the Channel 5 News. Stay tuned for more after the break. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With flow, it only gets better. Welcome back. Despite a dramatic drop in revenue and increase in expenditure, Prime Minister Skerritt says government will continue to maintain the social safety net for senior citizens and the National Employment Program, NEP. NEP alone costs government upwards of $3 million each month. Every month, we continue to provide in excess of $800,000. That goes towards the payment of the allowance to people 70 and over. That's what it costs us every month, $800,000. The National Employment Program, in, normal, so in any circumstance like this where a, country, a country's income or revenue is, is, is diminished, it will start making cuts. And it will start making cuts to things that it doesn't have a legal obligation to provide. And so under, normal, under any other country or, or government, the National Employment Program would have come to a crushing halt. But the government recognizing how important the NEP is to so many families across Dominica. That is the source of income for so many families to provide for their children. We have continued to maintain the National Employment Program, notwithstanding the fact that our revenues have, been, have dropped dramatically in our country. And it costs us every month, every month, $3.6 million to sustain the National Employment Program. OECS heads of government have agreed on a course of action to confront what they call a challenge to their social safety net. The U.S. government is making moves to once again place Cuba on a list of non-cooperative countries in the fight against international terrorism. Cuba was removed from that list in 2015 as part of a diplomatic normalization process between the U.S. and Cuba during the Obama administration. OECS heads have also been discussing draft legislation by the U.S. targeting countries that contract Cuban doctors through the Cuban government's medical brigades deployed in over 60 countries around the world. The bill introduced by Republican Rick Scott of Florida on Wednesday requires that the U.S. State Department publish a list of countries that contract Cuban doctors. That information would be used to place these countries in the State Department's Trafficking in Persons report. 
OECS heads regard this as a dangerous development that if successful in removing Cuban medical teams from OECS countries could severely undermine the delivery of health care in member states. And LIAT has issued a press release addressing statements made by the National Union of Public Workers in Barbados with regards to LIAT's employees. The National Union of Public Workers, NUPW, is calling on the shareholder governments of cash-trapped regional airline LIAT to pay its staff. The union, which represents 30 Barbadian pilots, says those workers have not been paid since March after being laid off due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The union says Antigua does not have an unemployment benefit and the workers had last been paid in March for February and Liat had decided to extend the layoffs for a further three months. Liat says it operates across several jurisdictions and they continue to engage their union partners during the COVID-19 pandemic. The National Union of Public Workers, NEPW, is not a recognized bargaining agent for any of Liat's employees. Pilots are represented by the Leeward Islands Airline Pilots Association, registered in Antigua and Barbuda. The company has been in discussion with Lialpa on all issues regarding the pilot's body. Prior to a COVID-19 crisis, the NUPW approached Liat on certain matters affecting Barbados-based pilots, which Liat has responded to as a matter of courtesy as the NUPW is not the recognized bargaining agent of Liat's pilots. Contrary to news reports, the chairman of uh, the Liat's board of directors, Professor Owen Arthur, has had no discussions with the NUPW. As borders were closed across the regional network, Liat suspended its scheduled passenger services from 16th March in certain territories and subsequently implemented a network-wide suspension on April 4. These services remain suspended through to 30th June 2020. Consequently, most of Liat's staff, including pilots, were laid off in accordance with labor laws. All staff, including pilots, were paid their full salaries for the month of March. The statement goes on to say the current pandemic has heavily impacted the company's operations and staffing, as has been the case with airlines worldwide. Liat continues, it says, with union engagement and frequent communication to its staff on the matter. In this regard, it says Liat is presently discussing the extension of the layoff period with the recognized unions in light of the continued closures, travel restrictions and slow reopening of borders across the Liat network. Liat says it continues to engage with governments across the region concerning their reopening plans and is working towards the restart of flight operations when the situation allows. you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up, switch to Flow. It only gets better. To end the news, the headlines again. Bellevue show by primary optimistic ahead of national assessment after a difficult two and a half months. New OECS Chairman Honorable Roosevelt Scarrett wants to see a unified approach towards the reopening of borders in the OECS. And the OECS says it has a plan to address a challenge to its social safety net. Feel free to access our past newscast on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Andrea Louis. And to all of our viewers around the world, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful weekend.